Leva. My poster. Okay. Right, just a minute. Better? Okay, that's better. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Good evening, great people. Welcome to our business corner the wealth show uh, where we always talk about how we can grow ourselves in the areas of business and I want to welcome you uh, into our show it's amazing to know that you're there for us uh, we never take it for granted we thank God for the journey that we are journeying together so it will be an amazing evening I hope you have your pen and you have your paper in place even as we talk about um, business and how we can grow ourselves from one level to another so I'm looking for an amazing uh, time together. Uh, kindly make sure that you're able to tag your friends, you're able to share. Uh, kindly make sure that you're sharing this um, page uh, in your uh, pages. And uh, it would be amazing, it would be great to uh, make sure that this content, this message is reaching each and every one that is intended uh, to and for. So welcome, welcome. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, feel free to share, uh, feel free to tag and uh, comment there, let us know where you're watching from, let us know how the sound is, how the video is, and we'll appreciate so much. So karibu sana, karibu sana, uh, even as we get into our today's topic, which is amazing, and I know we're going to learn together, we're going to um, uh, feel encouraged. I can see we really have Joe, uh, Joe Jenga Ngatho. Welcome so much, my brother, for coming in. Thank you even for seeing you yesterday. Uh, Sholuta, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for those who are commenting. We totally appreciate and uh, feel honored. Feel honored. Thank you. Uh, great. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for a confirmation about the sound. Someone tell us how the sound is, how the video is, and then we'll get direct into our um, discussion tonight. So someone should drop us a comment there. Tuned. Thank you, Nyokabi. How is sound? How is um, video? Looking forward to seeing a comment. It, it's okay. Good. Thank you, my director. Thank you, Saul. It's good. Thank you, Joe, for confirming that. Um, I think without much ado, we'll get into our discussion tonight. Um, and, and tonight we are discussing a very profound area of our business. And uh, it's what we call business sustainability. How can we be able to sustain 
our business? How can our business get to a place whereby that it is not retrogressing, it is not stagnating, but there is a sustainability. We can feel we are able to meet um, what the business was meant to. So that's what we'll be looking tonight and understanding the importance of business sustainability because at such a time when the economy, you know, it's fluctuating, there's a lot of, there is a lot of recession, there is a lot of, um, you know, inflation in the, in the market, then you need to have the nugget of seeing how can I be able to maintain my brand out there? How can I be able to maintain my business? Um, you know, at the end of the day, because the purpose of having a business is seeing how well you can be able to grow it and that's what we'll be discussing tonight about business sustainability and when we talk about business sustainability it's when we are talking at that a business is able to achieve certain levels of growth and you're able to maintain that standard of a given period of time let me repeat, when you talk about sustaining something, we're saying you have grown something to a certain level, then you can be able to maintain that, um, that growth to a certain level. So that becomes business sustainability. If you're selling, um, if you're able to have a production of a thousand units and you're able to sell a thousand units at a given period of time um, and making profits, that means you're able to meet all the needs and the demands of the business in terms of uh, expenses and at the same time you're able to make profit for a given period of time then we can be able the business is sustainable it's in that place whereby that is able to sustain itself it's able to run itself and that's what we'll be looking at how do you get to uh, the one how do you grow yourself to sustainability and then what do you do when it gets sustainability that is very important. How do you go through that stage whereby that you're able to say, my business has reached to a place whereby that. Um, I, I remember in this, we talked about business mindset and what it is required to have a business mindset. Then um, now that is one component of walking towards the journey of business sustainability. Then we look at when you get that place of sustainability, what do you do? Now, for you to be able to uh, make sure that you're getting your working journey or you're working towards sustaining your business. Number one is very important for you to be able to know. You're able to maximize opportunity. Every time um, you get into business, and that's why we were discussing in our previous shows about business mindset. One thing that in, will keep you uh, in the journey of working towards sustaining your business is a place whereby that you're able to maximize on the opportunities. Um, in terms of when I talk about opportunities, you're able to do a nice market research. Once you do a market research, you can be able to position yourself well in that market. You're able to get the best out of that market. Um, you're able to make sure that you're maintaining high standard in terms of competition that means that you're able to get customer and retain them over a given period of time so the moment you're able to do that you're taking advantage of the market you're able to maximize as you're maximizing you're able to make sure that the cost implication in terms of production is put at at, at a do you know at, at a manageable at a minimal uh, level that means you're able to get into the business and once you get the inner what you call in uh, intra business uh, environment uh, you are able to make sure that the, that environment in itself it is able to sustain itself in a manner whereby that you are not spending so much like for example if you are to produce this cup um, as a one unit and then sell it at 100 shillings. So make sure that you're able to maximize the opportunity. It means if I can be able to produce this cup at maybe 30, 40 shillings, that inclusive of the material in, in, in terms of labor, in terms of overheads, all the overheads about production of this cup, huh? it's 40 shillings. Then I'm able to sell it at 100 shillings. Then that means I have a profit margin of about 60 shillings. So it means there is someone else probably produce the same cup, the same material, same labor, and produce it at 80 shillings, then sell it at 100 shillings. So their profit margin is narrowed because the the, the, um, the intra, uh, intra environment of the business, it is not well managed. So when we are talking about getting to a standard or a stage of sustaining a business, then you must work at a stage where you have put system that are able to learn flawlessly. They are able to learn land smoothly so that at the end of the day when you're talking about now you won't sustain a business there is something you have created 
So I've said uh, one thing will help you to achieve uh, business sustainability is making sure that your business, there is um, there is that mentality of make sure that you maximize on any opportunity. You're able to seize opportunity in the market. You're very aggressive in the market. You're able to introduce something new in the market. You can be able to see how do I need to. We talked here about rebranding of your product. If you have a product that you have tried to push in the market and it is not responding, it is always wise to go back to the drawing board and ask yourself where do I need is it to repackage myself is that if I was doing a unit at 1kg and probably people are struggling to buy that 1kg how can I still make sure that I'm able to sell the 1kg but in more and smaller manageable units either half a kg or a quarter a kg at the end of the day there is a faster movement of the same product what happened is whether someone bought a half or a quarter of your product, as long as they bought it and it's out there, there is someone else who will see it and they'll have a mind of if I need this, there is where I can go. So when we are talking about walking the journey to sustaining your business, then you must make sure when the, opportunity, when the market is stable, when the market is friendly, then you're able to pick the best out of it. And when, when the market is, uh, you know, it's stable, it is friendly, uh, there is no high, um, you know, high cost of material, there is no high cost of, uh, you know, um, uh, when you talk about uh, competition, it's manageable. So when you're able to seize that opportunity, as a good businessman or a lady, what you need to go, you go full throat, you get into the market and maximize. Or number three, make sure you get as the highest customers as you can. Because there are moments when you will get to a place of sustainability. What you do at sustainability is not how much you can get new clients, but how you can maintain already what you have. So when the market is flexible, make sure you are able to be vigorous, you are aggressive, you are able to pump in for marketing. Um, at that moment, you are making sure that your brand is conspicuous out there. Um, people can be able to feel and, uh, and, and, and be able to uh, attach themselves to your product. At that particular moment, what you are doing, you are creating a strong and um, you know, concrete um one foundation, number two, royalty with your customers, so that when you get to a place of sustainability, it will be very easy to deal with them. So I've said, make sure you take advantage of the market. Number two, when you're talking about the journey towards or the pillar that sustains sustainability or are able to facilitate sustainability in business, then it is having what we call a culture. Now, there are two cultures that I'll talk here, intra and uh, um, when, when we talk about um, the, the culture, when we talk internal and external culture, internal culture is in, in, the, in the business in terms of employees, in terms of uh, uh, boss and managers, how system run in the company or in the business or the institution, that culture is very important. Because one thing that sustains a business is what we call people, and in the business term or in the, in, the, in, the, in the organization, we call them employees or staffs. Staffs are very key. Businesses with high turnovers, business with high turnover, that means there is you know, a, a massive in and out of the organization. It shows, it communicates to the, to the customer or to the clientele or to people that you trade with uh, that you are not permanent. It send, it send a signal that you are not serious with your business. And, and, and staff retain, uh, retainance um, rate is very important. When uh, you get into business and you're running business, whether it's a one-man show business, whether you have employed one person or two, the duration you'll have those staffs there, it, 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 it talks a lot. It, it, it communicates to the customer that you're ready to serve them. And that's why they, 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 they're sure of whoever served them today, um, it's going to make sure that tomorrow as they're coming, they're going to get the same person. So we cannot talk about sustainability of a business when we keep changing people. And when you change people, uh, people are the backbone of a system. It's like the people are able to define a system. So when you get you are in, you have new employees, then you're taking them through either on job or uh, you know off job training. At the moment you're doing all this, uh, remember uh, they have not gotten to the business culture. They don't know which client want what. They don't know how the client B react. They don't know how client C want uh, uh, his product served. You see all that, all that, um, all, the, all, the, all that roller coaster that you create 
it for your business. Your business will never get to a place of stability. Because you cannot talk of stability when you don't have employees who, if, if they're not permanent, they're saying permanent. In, in that means that they're serving for a given period of time. You are sure of for the next six months or one year, I have so-and-so in department A, I have so-and-so in uh, department B, and I have tried to minimize the reason as to why they should walk out. I, I hope I'm very clear that we can never talk of business sustainability when we don't talk about employees or staff retainance rate. Retainance rate is very important because that is where now that, that, that is the contact between the product and the client. Then the staff becomes the contact uh, place. Where, uh, they become the bridge. They become the connector. They're able to connect. So when you keep changing the bridge, when you keep, people are not comfortable walking through that bridge. People are not comfortable what will happen tomorrow. Before a certain client can be able to create their own relationship with a certain employee that they can have. Look, even the banks, they are, the people will walk in a bank and they know, I'm, 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 I'm I love going to Terra A because the um, do you know um, the, the, the the cashier or uh, the person at Terra A. Um, there is a way you communicate. They are the way they are able to understand you. That's a whole narrative about maintaining a business. So if you're listening to me tonight and you don't pay attention about retainers of your staffs, then you'll take so long to get into a place of sustaining a business. You'll always get into either your business is on the grow in a growing stage or a startup stage. It never get into sustainability because staffs are very key staff are very key and remember i'm talking about internal culture and i have only said about uh, where um, about staffs now you need to understand when you employ people there are two things you have to do on them number one either you have to do what we call induction uh, orientation and most of the time it will take time probably the orientation that will require money uh, because there are things they need to be trained on so you cannot keep spending on training people then once they're getting to st stabilize they're getting to understand how business is run then you have fired them then kidogo kidogo you have brought other people you're trying to help them learn the system as they're learning through the system they're messing the system as they're running through the system they're corrupting the system so you find you're not productive you find you're spending so much as much as you are working on cap uh, capitalizing and maximizing on the profit you are also not managing this profit well for business expansion what you are doing whatever you are getting you're spending so much in terms of putting it into things that are not tangible or they are not direct into business operations because and you need to sit down and calculate the overheads and be able to say, if we are getting a new staff, what will they cost us in terms of either training them, either doing the induction, either buying them uniform. So there is a quite a lot of things that comes when we keep changing staffs. So we cannot afford to talk about business sustainability when we keep assuming our staffs. They are part and they are co component and part of any sustainable business. So that is the uh, culture number one. Culture number two is how people are able to respond to um, two things. Uh, when we talk about culture, uh, it's expressed in terms of conflict and change. In a business that, um, remember we talked about, we'll get out there and be able to say, we have our product in the market, but that product is not pushing itself. It needs either re repackaging, rebranding, or probably there is a lot of san uh, sanitization that required to be done. And then when you come in, in terms of culture, where we talk about teamwork, there's a lot of adjustment, there's a lot of people are ready to change. We can be able to agree as a team, what do we need to do? We need to move out there and push this product. I've seen this most in hotels in town. You'll get um, either hotel in the, in the first floor or second floor, but there is someone at, at, at the basement or probably at the street, huh? and they have the bear and they're shouting, breakfast, lunch at hotel. What they're trying to do, they're not ashamed. They, they are saying we are part of this organization, and because we cannot bring our food here and parade it, what we'll do, we'll come here and we'll communicate to you that this is what we are offering. So there must be a place, most of the time, huh, you'll find we cannot be able to employ, pass someone who will do that. So what we do, we 
we are able to take one of our own staff who probably can step in as a chef, who can probably sometimes step in as a waiter when there is a workload. But when there is um, a minimal workload, then we can take one of our own and get out there and try to make sure that they're reaching out to one or two clients in a day. And at the end of the day, they are able to find that they are pushing the product into the market. So that is very important in terms of talking about culture because you cannot sustain any business without a culture. And culture is the way of doing things. It's as simple as that. This is the way how we do our things. That all of us are committed to pushing this brand. Uh, we are all commi uh, pu um, you know, committed to pushing to a vision, realizing what we want as a department, realizing there is that spirit we call in quotes, Kujituma, that people are able to push themselves out there and see that the organization and every product they have, it is able to competitively placed in the market. And people don't struggle knowing there is certain product that is out there. I have, I have found even staffs uh, using their personal social media to sell a certain product or rather they are they, 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 not um, they, they're not ashamed of uh, putting some of their products in their own social media. That tells that these people own up the organization. They own up a culture. They own up what the organization that is doing. That's why they'll go forth uh, to in their social media. No one is paying them to do that. No one is pushing them to do that, but they are feeling if in my social media I can be able to get two or three clients, then that means my company is better placed. My company is able to grow and to expand. And as this company is expanding, I'm also expanding. As this company is growing, I'm also growing. So that's very important when we talk about culture. There is no any organization will hit a state of sustainability without a culture. Because once you have built up a culture, then the culture now becomes the cornerstone of holding a, 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 you know, that organization to a place of sustainability. And I've said, why most of the business die? Because they don't prepare themselves, how they sustain themselves when the market is not responding, when the market is so competitive. When, for example, um, let me give an, a very simple scenario. When we talk about business um, sustainability, let give me this an example of probably it's, an, it's a hotel or a fast food um, joint where they do chips. When you talk about, uh, you know, flies, uh, um, you'll get during the season when potatoes will be, they'll be out of season. That means they're out of market. You'll get buying one debit of potatoes, probably a thousand or a thousand five hundred. Then when you do calculation, that same bucket cannot be able to produce enough to sustain that business at a particular moment. So that means when we are buying potatoes at 200, 300 shillings, we'll make sure we, mark, we uh, capitalize in selling much quantity as we can because we'll lower our price, we'll go out there and now rebrand ourselves to our customer and tell them we have reduced the cost. That means if when we were buying potatoes at 1,500, uh, 1, we were selling 10 units and now we are buying at 300, we can be able to sell 20 units and the 20 units will take five units and put it in a reservoir that will help uh, uh, do, will help us during hard moments so that we can be able to sustain business. When we talk about um, sustainability, it means that this business is not growing and what we are doing, we are trying to prevent retrogressiveness or falling of the business or maybe the business crashing. I hope I'm clear. Let me see um, what is happening here. Um, thank you. Thank you. You can see uh, we are doing well. Uh, amazing. Okay. 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 Um, I can see we have um, Joe uh, present. Uh, Liz, thank you. I hope you are having your notebook uh, because I know this is um, Jane, thank you, Reverend Jane, thank you. I like the wisdom, keep it up, my brother. Thank you, I appreciate. Um, so kindly keep, uh, keep, keep, keep sharing, keep uh, dropping comments there. Uh, I'm looking forward to all those people who are watching that they are sharing this wisdom into their pages so that we can reach as many people as we are. So I was talking about having a culture so that you maintain a business. I want to go very slowly so that you'll be able to understand. So I've talked about making sure that if you, um, you're preparing yourself to maintain a business. Make sure you maximize on the opportunities, the market, 
create a good culture um, that can be able to sustain, people are able to send themselves, people are able to push themselves. Then number three, which is very important, is making sure that you're able, one, to uh, have profit, manage profit well, and make sure that you're able to reduce expenses, unnecessary expenses. I find when um, organization, business, they hit at a boom, uh, that means that there is quite a good profit margin. And that's a moment company you find doing unnecessary um, uh, things. Um, probably you'll find them opening another a joint, which they have not done market research. They have not done a market search in terms of, is it a necessity? Uh, is that what we need to do with our profit? Or do we need to rip back our profit in a more productive? Uh, you get at that moment is when they talk about salary increment, which is okay. But you need to understand, every time you'll get your business, um, you know, there's a process of profit, high margins of profit. Believe you me, the next season you'll hit, it will be a difficult one. So if you'll sustain yourself, is be able to say that in every 10 shillings we make, we'll take two shillings and take it to reservoir. That, that will help us during bad days. And do you know what? Bad days will come in life or in business. So even in business, and we always say this, a business is a legal, is a, is a legal human being. I, actually, when, when, when we're talking about uh, business law, we'll always define a business as a legal person. So this person called a business, you must make sure there is a reservoir. We are able, in every 10 shillings, there is two shillings that you're able to keep it. At those moments when business will not be making profit, out there in the market, we'll still show people that we are still moving on. And you find at this particular moment, and please I want to give you an, an example. Tomorrow as you're walking on your street, go count how many businesses have closed. Go on Facebook and see how many products people are selling in terms of equipment. People are closing. And their season preceded, you know, there is a season that was there maybe two, three years ago, and business was doing, or maybe before COVID, 2018, 2019, 2017. I'll be able to say 2018, 2019, there was quite a good stability in terms of business. Uh, or, you know, but people, they never ask themselves. Now that there is a demand of my product, I'm selling much, how can I be able to make sure as I'm selling, I'm able to put something aside so that by that season when there'll be, uh, it, either it will be a rainy season or sunny season, depending on how you define it, it will, you have something will keep it. So you cannot talk about uh, business sustainability when you don't talk about managing profit. Remember, when we hit sustainability st uh, uh, state, uh, we don't talk about profit. We talk at operating at minimal, uh, or rather what we call equilibrium states. Whatever we are getting, at least can be able to bridge the gap that we don't make loss. Actually, anyone who is in business at this moment, they are not talking about, about profit. If you're in business, we are talking about just making sure that business will see the, uh, will see the end of the day and we'll see tomorrow. And that is the whole thing. About profit, we are not discussing about profit. Because you'll find, I'll, you'll buy a product at a very high cost, taxation is there, you're trying to do the, the, the selling price so that you make a, a profit and you find the profit margins are so low. They cannot be termed in terms of profit. So when we talk about profit, when your business is doing very well, remember it will hit a place whereby that uh, there will be a lot of challenge in that particular moment you need to see what had you kept in the bank what had you planned so so that is very important in terms of making sure that as you're growing your business as you're growing your brand as you're out getting out there you're able to make sure that your profit are well managed you have, have discipline of finances and i know i'm talking to people who probably they have two three four employees make sure that at the end of the day there is no wastage there is no wastage because most of the companies' wastage is too high. It's too high. We, we never do what we call the cost, um, the cost of, or rather, what is the benefit of what we are doing? What is the cost implication of what we want to do? Can we sit down and be critical, creative, and see what are different ways we can be able to do to minimize our expenditure? Because every businessman and business lady, every month, you must have a target of seeing how am I either reducing my cost or maintaining my cost. Or number two, if I'm, I'm going to adjust, 
my my expenditure by probably a thousand it must be felt in the profit that i have also increased my profit with two or three thousand it must be at times two of what we have increased in terms of expenditure those we, we must have what we call the business open-mindedness we must see ourselves as business lady and business people who feel a pinch when we don't attain what we have set for ourselves so you'll never sustain a business when you don't work on the profit now all that what I have discussed, it is what requires you and I to prepare before we hit in the, um, the, the sustainability stage. Now, let me get into the sustainability of a business. And I remember, I remember, I think this, that when you talk about sustainability, it's when you make sure that this you have, you're not going down. You can only either sustain for a given period of time or you can improve, whether it is by one margin or two margin. So when you hit on that sustainability, and why do we talk about business sustainability? Three things why that they, we will never um, assume when you talk about sustainability of a business. Number one is when your business either it's faced by competition. Number two, the environment is not conducive. Number three, there is inflation in the market or in the environment. So you find that there is the shilling or the dollar you find it is not that strong to maintain the business. Either in terms of the cost of material is too high, the cost of production is high, and then you find either probably because the inflation is in the whole um, market, then that means people the buying power of people it is down so that means they cannot spend as much i know there are people who are not buying sugar because if i'm buying sugar at 250 and i'm buying unga at 190 or 200 shillings you'll do mathematics and ask yourself as much as i want to buy the two items what can i do without I can take tea without sugar, but I cannot sleep without ugali. So what will I do? The buying power has been reduced because the value, the, the shilling has lost its value, or rather what we call the buying, uh, buying value or the buying power. So when we hit on the sustainability, then we are asking ourselves, if we are producing sugar, how do we sustain ourselves at this moment when sugar is not a demand, is not a priority? If you and I are producing sugar and sugar is packaging at 200 and above for a like kg, then and you find people don't have money, so sugar is an alternative, or probably they don't have to do with sugar. So when we if we're in that business, then we have to have what we call re-strategizing, replanning ourselves and ask ourselves, then how do we do so that we don't close? Um, does waiting that tomorrow the market will change that tomorrow things are going to better so every time we talk about sustainability we are saying we are going to maintain this waiting for a better tomorrow or waiting tomorrow things are going to shape it up or shape out and at the end of the day we'll be able to go through the dark moments that is a whole narrative about sustaining a business now when we get into sustainability the, uh, the, the, the number of factors that we need to look at number one we must make sure that we are producing what can be consumed. In other words, when we get into sustainability, we try to reduce production. In this sense, we don't have what we call dead stock. If you produce this cup at 60 shillings today, then you're going to sell this cup six months at 60 shillings. Then your 60 shillings then will have reduced in value. So that means the actual value of this cup then, it will be either 40 or 45 shillings. That means this product being in the store or being in the warehouse, it is depreciating in the sense of the cost that you produced it at that particular moment. When you stayed, where that uh, product stayed in the, in, the, in, the, in the store or in the, uh, in the market for long, then the value of that, product, uh, the, the, that product in terms of the cost, it's going down. So with that moment we sell it at the same product, at the same amount that we produced it, then we have gone a loss of 15 shillings. Most of the time we don't calculate that. So when we talk about sustainability, then we are saying we become very, uh, very direct what we want. The market requires us to produce eight units. We are not risking. If we are going to, re uh, to risk, we are going to produce nine units. That means we are producing 
it's called real time. It's a real time. Whatever is coming, it is what is being consumed. So we don't have to take a lot of products. We don't have to buy material at a high cost. And then we take that material and put it in the in the, in the in terms of production. And then we have goods here that cannot be consumed by the market. What will happen is um, we will make sure that a lot of money is lying, which cannot help us. And remember, at most of the time, when we talk about sustainability, is making sure that we become effective and efficiency. So effective and efficiency, uh, uh, being effective and efficient is very important. So you reduce on production. You produce what can be consumed in the market. I hope I'm very clear there. So that at the end of the day, also, at, at a time of um, uh, sustainability, uh, sustainability, you restructure your organization. That's the moment when you can merge organization. That is the mo that's the time when probably you have people taking leave, uh, probably people take leave on half pay. That's the moment where you negotiate with, with, with your suppliers and, uh, do you know, they supply you goods and then you renegotiate with them that you're going to pay in advance. You see, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do, you're trying to postpone your problems. Imagining tomorrow the business will do well. Imagining the environment will change. So when we get into um, uh, sustainability, you have to restructure your organization. There, that's where you merge. If you have two departments, you find there is a department of sales and there is a department for marketing. Why don't I join the two and make sure that either department of sales itself and marketing and communication it becomes one and then probably you can take sales and then marketing production or other sales marketing and communication and finance put it together what you have done you have reduced if you're using this room a whole day paying electricity then putting the same people in a different office where they can share you have reduced the cost of electricity so when we talk about uh, restructuring you're trying to find how can we reduce wastage in other words, how can we reduce wastage? These are moments when when you have an organization and they won't sustain themselves over a given period of time. We don't have to do meetings in hotels. We can do them in our own uh, boardroom. We don't have to ask for food from outside. This moment when we can ask ourselves, why don't we have our kitchen where we can do our own tea, buy milk at 60 shillings, buy sugar at 200, and that sugar can take us for maybe three or four days instead of going out there and taking tea with, um, you know, a cup with 300 shillings. So you try to become real and face the reality and find, like, where do we reduce wastage? You'll get to offices. When you talk about sustainability, you find they have a newspaper, they have three varieties of newspaper, they have maybe flowers. So when you talk about restructuring and probably scaling down, it's where we come and say, well, do you know what? We don't need flowers for a given period of time. We don't need newspaper. We can do them through the phone. So th that means we are able to reduce the, um, um, you know, expenditure because the purpose of making sure that sustainability of any business, it requires facing the reality and having leaders. Remember, we have talked about leaders who can be able to say things have to change. We have to change. We have to restructure ourselves. We have to see how we can go to the drawing table and find we don't have wastage. Because most of the time, when we are talking about sustainability, is trying to close all the taps that we don't require at that particular moment. That moment when you talk about business sustainability, the worst mistake you can ever do is try to reintroduce something new. That if you are trying to introduce something new in terms of a product and whatever you have probably it has not built a stronger royalty. So customers trying to find like probably are not sure of what you need to give them. So when we get into sustainability, you try to maintain your brand. Actually, the whole thing is about you are maintaining your brand, you are maintaining your 10 clients. If you get one, it's okay. But your biggest cry is not to get the, the 11th one. Your biggest cry and prayer and hope is that the 10 I have, none shall live. That is the whole thing about sustaining your business. Is making sure that the ones that I have, if God you add me, amen. But please don't take the ones that I have. The biggest cry when you talk about business sustainability is making sure it, as you get into the uh, drawing board, as you get into board meetings, your biggest thing would ask yourself, how do we maintain client B? How do you maintain clients? Because why? The same client you're talking about maintaining, they are also working on sustaining their, their business. So they are also trying to find how they can run away from your business.
So at the end of the day, you have to keep, uh, do you know, that's the moment you do a lot of follow-up of your client. That is the moment you scale up on customer care. That's the moment you do customer weekend, customer, um, uh, do you know, um, follow-up. That's the moment you send messages to your, uh, to your client, uh, telling them you're still doing well, kindly pass on our shop and see new products we have. And it's the same product that you have, but you have to keep vibing them. You have to keep showing them you are very active, you're doing a lot, but the whole point is you want to make sure that is a, a, there is a live communication between you and your clients. So when we get into sustainability, my friends, don't think on how to pump money on reproduction of a new uh, um, 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 product or a service. This is a moment when you sustain what you have. If you can, you can scale down to what is faster moving. If you find you have six products and probably uh, out of the six products, four products are the one that, you know, they're self-driven in the market, then you can choose to probably hold the two until the market is, um, uh, stabilize and push the four. So that at the end of the day, you're able to maintain your business. The same thing when we talk about business sustainability, this is when you face the reality and be able to say, you know what, we have 18 branches and three branches we thought by now they could have picked, but they have not picked. And it's a reality, they're consuming on the other 15. So they are not of any help at this particular moment. And the best thing you can do is close them down and wait for a better opportunity, for a better environment, then you can, you know, you can revive you can revive it you can revamp it and then move on so at this particular moment what you do you are trying to work with what is working actually you flow with what is flowing anything that seems to give you stress you should make sure you're dealing with it so that it doesn't destabilize you at that particular moment so that it doesn't cost you any opportunity, whether it is profit, whether it is putting, uh, do you know, uh, expenses at a at, at, at a a certain level, anything that seems to making sure the organization uh, it's getting to disability, you deal with it. When we talk about um, also stability, this moment, remember, also staffs they are able to feel the surety of them being in the organization tomorrow. This is the highest time when you get. Also, the staffs, huh? they don't have what we call the morale. They are not motivated. So if you are a leader, you are a boss, you are a business owner, during business sustainability, this is a moment when you reach out where they are. Remember when we were talking about leadership, we said that the four dimensions, the depth, when you go down to where they are. At this particular moment as the boss, when you're sustaining a business, you need to affirm to your, to your staffs. Yes, we are going through a season. You also know what is happening, but I'm committed to managing the little that we have. Now, the end of the day, everything that comes on the table will make sure you use it well. This is a moment you need to reaffirm to them that they need to, um, you know, to be more committed. You are there for them. You are pushing the whole thing together with them. This is not the time to vanish. This is not the moment when you're not seen. This is a moment when you, are, before you are heard, you are seen as the boss, as the manager. This is a moment when you don't quarrel. This is a moment when you put conflict at, at bay. This is a moment when conflict it doesn't appear in your meeting. What you are working on is in how can we manage change because this particular moment when you talk about sustainability, change is now same. A client is leaving, a client is talking, uh, renegotiating, uh, a client is trying to ask for a discount. This is the moment when change are hitting right, left, and center. So what you work on, if you're dealing with change, then you make sure you're managing conflict. Anywhere conflict will arise at business sustainability, it will kill that business. And this is the moment when you make sure that you're able to be attentive and you can listen before you can talk, either as a business owner or as a leader. Why? Because at that particular moment, you want to get first-hand information on what is happening in the organization and outside the organization. Any loophole that will cause conflict, I'm telling you, you cannot allow. Because you know any moment that conflict in or it crops in, it will cause a lot of destabilization in the organization. It will cause a lot of energy. And remember this particular moment, the organization is training. The organization is not building. The organization are people. Either the CEO, either the HODs, they are training, putting their mind, how do we maintain this? How do we maintain our business? How do we maintain our, do you know, um, our, 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 our 
books of accounts in a positive angle how do we make sure that we are relevant in the market so this is the whole thing about making sure that when we are hitting a sustainability and you're sustaining a business that moment work on change and manage conflict and if you can be able to deal with it before it arises make sure you do it these are not the moment good CEOs and good managers they know these are the times when you don't keep writing warning letters they can backfire on you like pap because this is a moment when you are giving a driver warning letter then they gonna go slow then by the time you're trying to hire and everything else everything is messed so this particular moment is when as a team leader you are making sure all your followers, all your team members, all your team players, they are so much committed. You're becoming the glue, you're becoming the fuel, you're becoming the motivator, you're becoming the encourager, so that at the end of the day, we are able to go through that um, a period of, but you know, um, sustaining our business over a given a period of time, then we can be able now to go to the next uh, phase of our business. I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm communicating well and someone is speaking um, some wisdom here even as we come to the end of our show um i wanted to check what you people are commenting i'm having a challenge with um with internet on this side um but nevertheless we'll we'll still move on and um as as as, as we finish 3f f for fish that you need not to forget um, during this show about um, sustaining a, a business. Number one, you must remain fle uh, fresh. Fresh in terms of fresh mind, fresh idea. This is not the time you, you have. Remember, you're not enjoying the monopoly of business. Um, there is what we call there is poly that means there are so many organizations who are also thinking like you so you have to maintain your a game that means you need to be fresh you need to have what we call brainstorming meeting creative meetings innovative meetings that is very important at this particular moment you need to remain fresh because you must remain on top of your competitors you must remain up there when your competitors are making a stride you have already taken like five strides so if you want to maintain your business in the place of sustainability you must make sure that you are fresh there is no recycling of idea there is no recycling of communication you must be on top of it you must be on top of the game so you must remain fresh in terms of what you're doing um Everything that you're putting yourself into it, it is very fresh. It, it is. Um, and then the other thing, you need to be very fast. You need to move very fast. So once you're fresh in your ideas, in whatever you're doing, move very fast. This is a moment when you seize opportunity. You don't have to wait for tomorrow. You are like, pop up, everything is ready. That's why I said the morale of the employee is supposed to be on top. Because any opportunity comes, one had to maraka. By the time even you're getting to a meeting to confirm, the already opportunity you have scooped it and you are moving with it. So you need to be very fresh in whatever your ideas, fresh in terms of what you want to do. Then back it with the move fast. You need to move very fast. You need to counter when your competitors are doing this. Counter with something new when they are thinking on uh, probably uh, if you can be able to take your product where your staffs are or rather where your clients are they don't have to come where you are move with urgency very fast go to where they are that means they have no time to rethink of somebody somebody else they're not thinking of getting another service provider fast is very important so make sure that you're very fresh in whatever you're doing no recycling then make sure that you are not um you're not uh, slow in moving you're very fast in terms of moving um, in terms of making sure everything is in place that is very important then making sure that you're able to do what you call follow-up most of the time when you're moving very fast you can forget to do a follow-up do a follow-up yesterday we delivered how was it did you like it where do you think we need to change that concern that care it's very important in terms of follow-up 
and have find most of the organization when client comes and they leave their contact kindly make use of that contact in a very formal manner try after a month and ask them did you like our product could you mind referring us to somebody else with eloquence in terms of communication follow up is very important and actually well, let me tell you follow up is where we are able to uh, bleed and uh, crop up what we call customer royalty because customer royalty means that these people are comfortable with you they're ready to work with you so you need to do a lot of follow-up when someone shows interest please follow that interest follow it that's why i always say this if you're a business owner one thing you cannot assume is the power of communication. You need to keep learning. You need to know what, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to communicate to different clientele? How am I need to, um, to go to where they are? That is very important. So when you talk about business sustainability, you must make sure you are fresh, move very fast, and make sure you are following. That is my parting shot tonight. Um, I hope uh, everyone have gotten something that will be of help into whatever they are doing. Um, and uh, they'll be able to, I, I can see my comments are back. Thank you, uh, Reverend S uh, Simon Mathenge. That is my uncle. I appreciate uncle for taking your time and being here. Korea, thank you. Anthony, thank you. Hey, today we have new members. I think we need to welcome them. So we need to welcome our new members in the house. Um, that is uh, Reverend Simon Madenge. Kuria Anthony, thank you for coming in. Uh, Mwangi, thank you for coming in. We also have a new member, um, uh, Ruth Kamau. Hey, I appreciate these people coming in. in uh, yes, even Tabitha, my mom uh, from Agugoni. Thank you. Hey, today people... Uh, it was amazing. I think today we, the class had all the newcomers. And we appreciate uh, for you people coming. My biggest request tonight, make sure even as even we end this show, copy the link, paste it on your page. It will help us to reach as many people. That's why we are having new members every uh, show. And we don't take it for granted. Remember we said, this is our show. We are doing it together. We are working together. So it's my humble prayer that all of us um, we'll be able to grow together. I want to acknowledge all, um, do you know, when you are to Kwaviti Kitambo, Kina Ann, thank you for uh, following. Uh, thank you, Reverend Maureen, for always keeping uh, great knowledge. We appreciate God for that. Thank you, Sholuta, very power, very helpful. And, and, and we thank God for all the wisdom that he has shared with us. And we are praying that from this show, people are going to get wisdom, they're going to get a nugget, they're going to get impacted and influenced. At the end of the day, we'll be able to say from the well show, we have been able to produce waters of life. So from this end to where you are, may God bless you. Keep it safe. Um, next week, we have an amazing open talk. So make sure uh, that you are able to follow us. Go to our YouTube channel, Sam Minor SMTV. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and we are blessed to have you. So from our end, shalom, shalom. God bless you. We love you. This is a place where we grow together. If you would want to be a partner with us, kindly drop us a message uh, and we'll be able to uh, share with you how you'll be a part of us. So God bless you. We love you. And this is The Well Show, where we grow together and we nourish one another. Shalom, shalom.